So for 26 years, you've been giving interviews to whoever asked you for an interview, and so why do you do it? Probably because of all of the bad press, all of the twisted uh, stories, or, or uh, you know, all of the negativity that's gone on over that time through the media. Uh, I, in my case, I feel somebody has to try to explain or, or try to give uh, the truth of what happened or, or, or whatever. And uh, it's not always popular, even amongst the survivors. There's a lot of survivors that why do you get up there and talk? You don't represent us. You, you're not talking for us, you know, on our behalf. We haven't commissioned you to do it, sort of thing. And I think, in my mind, justifying why I do it, I kind of feel, well, I was spared from being killed. I was spared from spending 15, 20 years in jail. And uh, you kind of feel, well, maybe God preserved you as a witness. Somebody needs to tell the truth. Somebody needs to uh, try to explain what did happen or what we do believe because there's very few people out there that can do it. There's a lot of people who would like to give you interpretations of what they think went on, you know, but that's not the truth and they don't know. So whether I do a good job or a bad job, you know, I just hope that God can reach somebody with what is said to where they at least start thinking for themselves, you know. I mean, I went to, to uh, Australia recently and visited some of the survivors. And uh, they said, well, what do you come over here for? I says, well, I'm not coming to try to, you know, recruit you. I'm not c coming to try to get you on my side or accept me as anything. I said, I come because I want to see you. I'm your friend. You're my friends. You know, I says, uh, we all have something in common. Regardless of whether you believe in David Koresh's message or, or uh, have second thoughts about all the stuff that went on, I says, uh, we've shared an experience. Just like all the survivors from the Titanic. In normal life, most of them probably wouldn't talk to each other. You know, you had poor Irish uh, immigrants, you had rich families on board. But the, in being a survivor of an event like that, something binds you together. You're put into a category whether you like it or not. And so uh, whether I'm the best one to talk, that's not for me to judge. I think somebody has to, or should. The fact that we did survive, the fact that we're still, some of us are still around, uh, just means that uh, if the press want to know something from the survivors, they know where to come because Clive Doyle usually answers their questions to the best of his ability. Uh, if I just get an attitude and say, don't bother with me, you've already got all the answers or whatever, and that doesn't sit well with them and it doesn't sit well with what we represent. David says, I don't care who the people are that are coming. I don't care whether they're ATF, I don't care whether they're FBI, I don't care whether they're reporters or anybody else. They're souls to be safe. So that that's the angle that we look at or we should be looking at it. Uh, what can we say, what can we do that will help people understand, help people appreciate uh, what we bought into? I mean, you've either got to write us off as all being dumb, you know, hoodwinked, brainwashed people. But then when you look at the world, the ones that are watching the TV every day, reading the newspapers every day, 
are they brainwashed? You know what I'm saying? You look at a commercial, they are the most stupid things on the, on the television. It's the commercials for all these different products. You do not buy it because they have some lizard up there trying to sell insurance or some other com comedic presentation. Even the salesman, you're not buying it because they're telling you there's a sale on. Not really. But you are buying it because it's available. They're just letting you know that it's available. And so people get sucked into, you know, somebody told me the other day, oh, you need to get into the 21st century. You're still living back in the past. I says, I'll probably get, be getting dragged into the 21st century, kicking and screaming. I'm an old guy, you know. Change is relatively hard. But all of this so-called advancement, which the television and the magazines and everything are all touting, is the latest gadgets, all the electronics and the technology and so forth, it comes with a price. Everything you buy costs you an arm and a leg more than it did back when you were 10 years old or 20 years old or whatever, you know. Do you want to elaborate on the price? You said it comes with a price. Do you, do you mean something beyond just what we pay for it? Or, or am I just taking that a little bit too far? Technically, you know, they're all up in arms about drugs opioids and stuff like that and all the people that are getting hooked on it to the point where they're you know they're an addict basically the people that are doing it know what they're doing the government knows what they're doing law enforcement knows what they're doing the courts know what they're doing and I'm not just talking about drugs but every product that's out there is being sold under false pretenses. Ford, the best truck in Texas. Chevy's the best truck in Texas. Toyota's the best truck. Well, they can't all be the best, but they put it out there, which is a lie. I mean, if you go by the facts, if you go by the numbers, but in their mind, they can twist the facts and the figures to make it look like what they're saying is God's honest truth, which it isn't. Mm 